Hello guys. So now we shall be discussing regarding the sole of the foot. Okay. So the topic of discussion will be regarding the sole of the foot. Right. So regarding the sole of the foot, first of all we shall see what is the sensory innervation for the sole of the foot, and after that we shall discuss about the muscles, and then we shall discuss about the motor innervation. Okay. So regarding the sole of the foot, here you can see I'll draw. Two lines over here and explain you what is the sensory innervation, right? So, for example, let us say this is one line over here, and this is another line like this all the way. Okay. Now, here exactly, if you observe that at this heel part, now you can very clearly see this part, right? So, this part is given by a sensory nerve. Okay. In the same way. In the same way, even this part which I'm highlighting right now with the green, even this is also given by a sensory nerve. Okay, so even this is also given by a sensory nerve. And finally, here we have got one more part, right? So yeah, this one over here. Right, the later part. So this is also given by a sensory innervation. So let us see what are the different nerves over here. Okay. So let us see what are the different kinds of nerves over here. So the heel part is given by a nerve that is called as a tibial nerve. That is called as tibial nerve. And in the same way, this medial half of the plantar region as well as the lateral half of the plantar region are given by two separate nerves. For example. Lateral half of the plantar region is given by lateral plantar nerve. Medial half of the plantar region is given by medial plantar nerve. Lateral plantar nerve, and here it is given by medial plantar nerve. Okay, so lateral half is given by lateral plantar nerve, and medial half is given by medial plantar nerve. So these are the two important things which you need to know, right? Now. This lateral plantar nerve over here, which you can see, right? So, what is this branch? Is it a motor branch? No, I told you all these are the sensory nerves, right? So, this is a cutaneous branch. So, you can tell it as cutaneous branch of lateral plantar nerve. So, this is a cutaneous branch. So, in the same way, even the medial plantar nerve over here, this is also a cutaneous branch. This is also a cutaneous branch. Okay, and next important thing is that coming to this tibial nerve. What is this tibial nerve? This tibial nerve. There is a branch of this. The name of the branch is medial calcaneal branches of tibial nerve because here you have got a bone and this bone is called as calcaneus, right? So the nerve is medial calcaneal branch of tibial nerve. Okay, so it would be medial. Calcaneal branch of tibial nerve. Okay, so all these are the sensory nerves. So once again, there are three sensory nerves. One is uh, medial calcaneal branch of tibial nerve. Another two are the cutaneous branches. One is medial cutaneous. Uh, one is medial plantar cutaneous branch of the lateral plantar. Right. So this is the overall thing which you need to know. And second important thing is that when you cut down the skin over here, you're gonna get layers. There will be skin, and after that you have got subcutaneous tissue, and after that you have got superficial fascia, and then deep fascia, right? So now our main topic will be on the deep fascia. Deep fascia. Actually, in the sole, in the sole of the foot, if you see, deep fascia is having three parts. Okay. So how many parts is deep fascia comprised of? Deep fascia is comprised of three parts. Okay. One is in the center. One is in the center, okay. One is in the lateral side, lateral side, and another one is to the medial side, medial side. So there are three parts of the deep fascia. One which is located in the center, one to the lateral, one to the medial side, right? So the structures which are located in the center, lateral as well as medial. So if you look at the deep fascia which is located in the center. I will show that to you. Just uh, listen to whatever I'm telling you. If you look at the deep fascia, 
which is located in the center and that deep fascia is very thick okay so that deep fascia is very thick and if you look at the deep fascia that is located in the lateral as well as medial that deep fascia is very thin that deep fascia is very thin so this thick part of deep fascia is also given another name called as aponeurosis so this aponeurosis where it is present in the sole the plantar region so you can also call it as plantar aponeurosis so it is plantar apo neurosis okay the exact question is why did this region become thick why there is plantar aponeurosis okay the reason is that actually plantar aponeurosis is nothing but a degenerated muscle okay what is the name of the muscle plantaris muscle so plantaris muscle gets degenerated and becomes thick in the center to form plantar aponeurosis okay so this is a degenerated plantaris muscle degenerated plantaris muscle okay so this is one of the very important question guys right second important thing is that let me show these structures to you so what did i tell you i told you that uh, let us let us say that here we have got a calcaneus bone right so let us say this is our calcaneus okay so this would be our calcaneus bone over here and after that let us say that here exactly you have got this fascia okay so this fascia which i am drawing here right so this is your plantar aponeurosis i told you right the center part is very thick see how thick the center part is so this is the thick portion of the plantar fascia the center part is very thick after that the part which is located on the side like this right so this uh, this is also called as a deep fascia but this part of the deep fascia is very very thin okay this part of the deep fascia is very very thin so the structure which is located in the center is called as plantar aponeurosis structure which is located in the center is called as plantar aponeurosis plantar aponeurosis then what is the structure that is located medially and structure lo located laterally structure which is located medially is called medial plantar fascia medial medial plantar fascia and this is called as lateral plantar fascia okay medial plantar fascia as well as lateral plantar fascia and next important thing is that you have to remember that here we have got some ligaments which are transverse like this right so these ligaments are called as transverse metacarpal ligaments okay and where are they present they are present at the level of this deep fascia right so all these three parts which have written here all these three parts are the parts of deep fascia only so those metacarpal ligaments transverse metacarpal ligaments are also called as deep transfer metacarpal ligaments okay so this is called as this one over here is called as deep transverse this is metatarsal ligament deep transverse metatarsal ligament okay so here we have got our medial plantar fascia and after that this is a lateral plantar fascia clear right second important thing second important thing is that there is one very important clinical point guys clinical point is that for example whenever you are standing right what will happen is that this plantar fascia this plantar aponeurosis whatever is there that will stretch okay whenever you are standing in you and me in all of us the the plantar aponeurosis will stretch now if you are standing for a long time then the plantar aponeurosis is stretched for a long time so when the plantar aponeurosis is stretched for a long time right after repeated for example traffic police right so they keep on standing for a longer duration in a day let us say for 6 hours 7 hours continuously right so if you are standing for a long time what will happen is that this plantar aponeurosis is all the time stretched and there can be inflammation of plantar aponeurosis 
So if there is any kind of inflammation of plantar aponeurosis, this condition you call it as plantar fasciitis. Okay. So if any patient is having plantar fasciitis, he will have very severe pain in the sole region of the foot. He can't, he won't be able to walk properly. Right. So if repeatedly this plantar fasciitis is keeping on happening in a patient, then what will happen is that slowly this plantar fascia, the, the last, the posterior part of the plantar fascia, which means here, the posterior part of the plantar fascia here, it gets calcified. It gets calcified and uh, what will happen is that a lot of calcium gets deposited over here and there will be bony spurs, for example. This is a foot, right? This is a foot, right? So it gets calcified and you see small bony spurs that are projecting out like this. So when you take an x-ray and see, you will see small bony spurs that are coming out, right? So obviously these bony spurs are like thorns. So again, when you keep on walking, they give you a kind of pricking sensation. You'll have very severe pain in the soul. Okay. So this is the important clinical thing you need to know. So let me write this thing down. For example, when you are standing, when you are standing, what will happen? The plantar aponeurosis will stretch. Okay. So if you are long standing, what will happen? The plantar aponeurosis is continuously stretched and this might lead to plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis okay and if you see such kind of plantar fasciitis in a patient repeatedly so if you see plantar fasciitis repeatedly right what is going to happen is that there will be calcification there will be calcification so this calcification will lead to formation of calcaneal spur it means there will be a spur formation on an x-ray which you see on the calcaneus right so this is one of the very 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 important thing 